I remember the first time I got hooked. I was 12 years old and it was a Burgundy 1981 300. The car belonged to my uncle and every time he came by to visit, I would say hi and head directly to the car. I would sit inside and I would imagine what it would feel like to drive it. I'm a car enthusiast. Most of all, I'm a Mercedes-Benz enthusiast. This is a brand with a rich history. There's the 300SL Gullwing, a sports car that has been described as being the world's first supercar. There's also the 600, pure luxury intended to represent the absolute pinnacle of automotive engineering. This is a car that attracted all types, celebrities such as Hugh Hefner, Elizabeth Taylor, John Lennon, Jack Nicholson, and Elvis Presley. Presidents like Ferdinand Marcos, Idi Amin Dada, Jomo Kenyatta, and Mao Zedong were committed customers to the brand. There's Mercedes and there's AMG. That's just another level and that's just way, way, way out there. The reason why I'm doing this movie is because there are people like me that just love these cars and there's a story in that. I grew up in Kenya, East Africa. And if you know Africans, we are crazy about Mercedes cars. There's even a name given to people who drive Mercedes Benzes. They're called the Wabenzi. Presidents, gangsters, dictators, CEOs, they all want the Mercedes. They demand the Mercedes. Cars in general reveal a great deal about their owners, and every time you see a Mercedes-Benz in a movie, it tells you so much about the character driving it. Is this your car? Oh no, in Beverly Hills we just take whichever car's closest. The cars stand out on the silver screen, from James Bond to John McClane, sometimes the good guy, and sometimes the villain. Mercedes cars always bring the action. Just makes you feel like you're king of the road. It turns on a dime, which really surprised me when I got behind the wheel of it. The turn ratio is excellent. That's what you call a 360. The cars of the late 70s and 80s had cutting edge safety technology. anti lock brakes, the first to offer airbags, traction control. The safety issue is important to, to me and, uh, and my wife because we have a four-year-old daughter. Mercedes also raised the bar in terms of ride comfort and handling. And believe me, uh, I wouldn't put her in a car that I didn't, didn't feel absolutely confident that she would be safe in. The company's 220 sedans were the first vehicles to incorporate its patented crumpled zone body design, created to absorb impact in the event of a crash. Uh, we have that kind of confidence in a Mercedes. That was then. Now imagine what the current models have. My first car was a 1979 350SE with a large V8 engine. I was 21 years old and I loved that car. Well, my first Mercedes when I was 16. This is my first Mercedes. This was my first Mercedes. I was 15 when I bought my 300D. Any Mercedes lover will tell you that they all call their car my baby. That's my baby. <laughs> my baby. It's gonna be my new baby. baby. This is my new baby. I sometimes wonder if I'm the only one obsessed with these cars. The lines of this car are amazing. This is one of the most beautiful engineered machines. I certainly wouldn't have any other car now that I've driven one. The Mercedes S-Class, it's luxury, it's butter. Handles like a cloud, it's beautiful. Mercedes owners love their cars. You know, the ones that own the older models especially are so passionate about them. 1985 300 CD Coupe. So 1989 560 SEC. There came about a fondness for these cars that is just so hard to put into words that all I can say is that it is in my blood. It's a part of me. 1970 280 SE 3.5 Coupe. I have always loved older Mercedes because I grew up around them. I have never been able to resist the pull of one. These cars elicit a pull for me that is almost magnetic. 1987 300 SDL Turbo. 72, 108 body. It's 1970 220D. 1976 240D. Over 600 receipts and 21,000 put into 
to this car. Had everything restored and she's a beauty as you can see. The online forums, the car clubs fuel the passion on a global scale. You know, there are taxis in North Africa that have a half a million miles on the odometer. Probably with just over 300,000 miles in the clock. It's my daily driver. I drive uh, about a 60 mile round trip every day. It's almost at 400,000 miles now. I've put 150,000 miles in one of these cars in three years. You know, a lot of people have these cars as daily drivers, and that's what I like about them. I mean, these cars just keep on going. So the engineers didn't realize that these cars were going to be on the road this long, so they actually over-engineered them. It's a powerful statement. When you see that star pulling up behind you, anything can happen. When I look at the Mercedes star, looking over the hood of the car, you see the Mercedes emblem, and it's a signature, a sign of prestige. It is a source of comfort and familiarity for me, almost. This, the snob appeal. Well, the car is driving really smooth, sailing also in front of me. It's pretty cool. It is the thing in my life which I am most familiar with. A visionary symbol to get focus in an emblem. This is a symbol of perfection. I love the tall grill and the, the prominent hood star on it. Join me on this journey of discovery as we travel across the globe from the United States to Europe, Asia, the Middle East and Africa. This movie will explore the love affair of Mercedes-Benz owners and their cars. It's always been the car in the family where everybody could use and if their car broke down, but guess what, the Mercedes was always on the road. I decided to treat myself to my dream car and that was a Mercedes. And this thing right here, you go anywhere, anywhere, and you pull up in a Benz, it's like, oh my gosh, you have arrived.